Okay, so Mr. Rat comes around. All right, you ready? And he goes, mm, that smells good. Goes, ah! Ah! That's not a mouse. Terry the T-Rex. He's going to help us. Especially when we go to Wildlife Expo. He's going to help us trigger the traps. We got a T-Rex problem in St. Louis or what? Yeah, so the Missouri Department of Conservation called us out. Uh, and uh, seems like all of this DNA splicing and stuff they found from the woolly mammoths, well, it's created a T-Rex problem. So we're going to show you how to set the traps properly. And Michael's going to show you how to bare hand a T-Rex. This time of the year in St. Louis, there are a lot of rodent problems. We got squirrels having young everywhere. We've got rats and mice wanting to be inside. We've got field mice that normally stay outside, but they want to be inside. And then we've got house mice that are just having tons and tons of babies. So we're going to talk about three really important things when it comes to trapping rodents. That is how many traps you set, how you actually bait the traps, and how you place the traps down to catch the animals. So let's just dive right into it. What's most important is how many traps are you gonna set? This right here is the most important part. Now that box right there costs $38. If you ain't willing to spend $38 on my mice traps to set all these traps, then you're not serious. But the quantity of traps that you set has a lot to do with how successful you're gonna be. Now these traps are really cheap. They're made out of wood. These are the professional pan Victor mouse traps. And you wanna set a lot of them. Like a normal size St. Louis house that is a basement and two stories, you easily need this many traps. If someone, if someone calls you about a mouse problem or a rodent problem, how many mice do they probably even have in there? That's a really good question and it's hard to answer because everybody's got different problems. It depends on how old the house is and how clean they are and also how clean the previous person was. Because if it's a house mouse and it's in the house, those things can live off of one can of soup for like 10 generations. If you're noticing mice, then for every mouse that you actually see, there's probably 12 to 15 that you never see. So it just depends. I mean, we've gone into homes that were infested with mice and they said, we saw a couple of mice and we get in, we end up catching 30, 40 mice out of the house. Please excuse our chicken hawk. Squid will be making noises in the background. That's our falconry chicken. It's normal stuff. Yeah, it's just normal stuff. So when we talk about rodent traps and these traps that we have right here are predominantly made for mice and rats. There's a lot of manufacturers. There's a lot of patent on rat traps and mouse traps out there. And I'll tell you, they all have pluses and minuses to them. We're going to do another video on which of these traps is safest for my pet. We're also going to go over um, the different mechanisms used to trigger the trap. And so there's a lot to talk about. We're going to make some different videos that cover some different um, aspects of all these traps. Oh, they get bigger. Yeah, I'll tell you, they make, uh, they make a trap like this for sewer rats, and then they make one size bigger than this for squirrels. Squirrels are rodents, and if a squirrel is in your house, you can set a lethal trap for it. Just cannot poison them. No poison on squirrels. So as I was saying earlier, this video is all about how many traps should you set and how do you bait the traps and how do you place the traps. These traps are $2 a piece. That's $40. To get rid of rats? Come on, buy the traps. You need a lot of traps. Now let's talk about properly baiting the traps. We could make a whole video on what is the best mouse bait, what is the best rat bait, but we're going to use what we use all the time on a professional level. The first thing we use is peanut butter. Peanut butter is an excellent bait because it tastes really good. Peanut butter is an excellent lure because it smells really good. Dub. Dub, leave the chicken alone. We use peanut butter because it's an excellent glue to hold your real bait. And what we like to use for real bait is cockatiel mix. It's a $6 container of food. And I'm gonna tell you, if you have rats in your house, spend the money and buy some good bait. I know you got peanut butter already. This is at Walmart and you can find it at other pet stores. It's got a great blend of small uh, seeds and large seeds and it smells good. All right, so these traps 
are very similar. These are probably the two traps that you will run into the most. The standard Victor uh, wooden trap. This is the professional pan. It also comes with a little copper pan that you, that you can get. The copper pan is the most common pan, but you get the most misses with a copper pan. Get the big professional one because it's got this little bait well right here, this little square. And that bait well is where you want to put your peanut butter. So when you bait a trap. The little back square. That little back square. And what you want to do is you want to get your peanut butter right in there so that's inside the well. And then you want to scrape off all the access. And the reason why is because you don't want a whole bunch of ac ac excess peanut butter for them to be able to get in lick on without setting this pan off. The next thing you wanna do is you take your trap and you stick it inside here and you get a seed mixture stuck to your peanut butter. This is a perfectly baited trap. Wow. And so what will happen is the rat or mouse, because you can catch both in this, you can also catch flying squirrels with this, will come up here and it's way back here and there's not a lot of excess so he's gonna put his little foot right here on this pan and it's gonna snap. This type is the same principle, it's just different. So this is your bait well, right here. So you just take a little bit of peanut butter for glue and you get it in there and look, pull the, ex the excess off. You don't need that much and you don't wanna give them anything to steal. And you stick it in here, shake off the excess, excess, do I keep saying access? I'm not sure, but it's working for me. And you have a perfectly baited trap. That's all you need. You do not want to gump up this trap with a whole bunch of peanut butter on top of it. You don't want a whole bunch of stuff setting on top of it. You just want a good bait that's stuck to it with a good lure and a good adhesion. And so that's what the peanut butter does. Nothing's as great as the Franken Sour though. Raise for your energy needs. No sugar, which is good for people my age. If, I'm gonna have this one. Cole's gonna have this one. If you're on Medicare, you should get Ray's. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I can see the lawsuits coming. <laughs> Here, have your Ray's. Oh, thanks, appreciate it. Just to finish off the trap, you just <laughs> wanna, wanna put a little bit of Ray's on it, right? Right? That's just, what you said. Just put a little dab of Ray's on there. Let's talk about the Victor trap because this is the one that people have the most access to. Everybody knows Victor is the name in traps, okay? Are they the cheaper option, like the wood ones, or? Nope, they're not cheaper. It's just that Victor has been advertising rat traps forever. I think the very first commercial I ever saw as a three-year-old was a Victor rat trap. Memories. This trap is comprised of a spring and kill mechanism, a pan, and then a trigger mechanism also known as the dog. So the way you set this trap is you pull it back like this. This is the scary part. And then you set this in right here and then you put it up. Always set your trap near where you're going to place your trap. Don't set your trap like, like this. Don't hold it like this because it's easier. Don't put your thumb over it like this because it's easier. Don't set the trap like that because it's easier. What will happen is when you oh my gosh. put the trap down, it snaps. It's got an S and it's got an F on it. All right. On the pan? Yep. See, see the F? That means firm. See the S? Yes. That means sensitive. Okay. The other thing is whenever you set your trap, you want to figure out how far down you can pull the pan so that the pan is flat like that. This trap is set differently. There is no tension on it. You can't adjust it, but you just pull this back and it's set. So much easier to set. It's one of the um, attributes of this particular trap that makes it easier than that trap. Trap placement is important. You want to place the traps somewhere near 
their travel pattern. We can do another video about how you can figure out where a run is in the insulation or what you can do to figure out the oily, dirty smegma that they leave behind them. Don't just arbitrarily place traps everywhere because that's not gonna work. For here, let's pretend like this is a wall and the mouse is going this direction. And he's going around the corner and he goes in a hole. Or the rat is coming in this direction and he goes around the edge of the door and he goes into the pantry. But you know that this is the travel pattern. The proper placement of a trap is like this. Because this way, the, the mouse or rat has to travel across the path of the kill zone, which the kill zone is from here to here. Same thing with this trap. When you place it, it needs to be placed like that. So that you've got the travel pattern coming this way. If you place the trap, and I've seen people do this, like this, more than likely, the rat is going to either run across the trap or he's going to come at the bait at an angle like this. All right? And we'll show you in slow motion what's going to happen to this trap if he gets on this pan and like this. I've seen people place the trap like this. You will catch the mouse or rat if it's coming in this direction. It'll stop, it'll smell it, and then it, it may go for the bait. I've also seen people place the traps like this. This allows the rat to approach this trap from a bunch of different angles, and some of those angles could not be kill angles. But if you put the trap like this, you're gonna force this rat or mouse to come in here, be eating the bait, and it'll step on the trigger, and it's gonna smack him. Cole, ask me why these holes are here. Hey Michael, why are those holes there? Well, a lot of the better manufacturers place these holes here because it is best to screw these traps down so that they don't jump. Huh. Right? Super neat. Because traps jump. Don't be scared. All right? These are just mouse and rat traps. I'm a little scared. They will not hurt you. Well, let's define hurt. They will not mortally hurt you. If you're smaller than me, you might break a finger with some of these traps. But with these traps, I mean, even if you get snapped, this might be painful, but it's not gonna hurt you, like you're not gonna bleed. But anyway, so let's pretend like I'm a mouse. No, let's pretend like I'm a rat. I'm a rat, I'm a dirty rat, all right? And so I come over here and I'm like, hmm, oh good, somebody set this trap wrong. So I'm gonna climb right over the top of it, like this, and then I'm gonna go, hmm, that smells good, and I'm gonna start eating it. Did you see that? Yeah, like, would have It didn't been, catch the rat. Would have, like, ejected it across the room. So let's do it again so that you can get that in slow-mo. All right, so somebody sets this trap, and they set it incorrectly. This is the proper way. This is improper, because Mr. Rat comes this way. He's like, oh, this is, smells so good. He doesn't get caught. It looks like it got you, though. Did didn't it didn't get me. Did it not? Where did it get me? It didn't I, even touch me. It looked convincing. Like it looked like it may have got you if you were a rat. If your hand was a rat. Okay, so look, this is what getting looks like. Okay, so Mr. Rat comes around. All right, you ready? And he goes, mm, that smells good. Like, ah! 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 Yeah. That's, that's what got you looks like. Got you. No Michaels were hurt in the making of this video. No Michaels were mortally wounded in the making of this video. So pain is relative, you know? It's like uh, things that might hurt you just don't hurt me. You do say the wood ones hurt more. This Victor trap hurts when we talk about pain. I'm not putting my hand in this there. This Victor trap, we'll, we'll, hey, let's do this. Let's do a rating system. I'll stick my hand in each of the traps and I'll give you a one to 10 on it. How's that? It sounds like a great separate video. So you said to get like a minimum of 20 of these traps, but like, am I putting like 10 traps on one wall? I mean, like what's the sensible thing? Like trap placement is about how you place the trap on the wall. Strategic placement is how many traps do you put on a wall? So let's say there's a hole over here that goes inside the wall, and then over here is an opening that goes into a door. So this spance needs two traps minimum. One over here to catch that mouse when it comes out, and one over here to catch this mouse when it comes out. Now if two mice come out of this hole, one will get caught here, the other will get caught here. Let's say this is the pantry. 
over here where all your food is stored. Let's put some more traps in. And this is about how far I space traps. Okay. But it's not about how many you want to put on a run. It's about how many do I want to put near entry exit points. So around doors, or into holes, um, around food sources, around ledges. You know, you want to you want to trap on all these different areas that are access that are coming and going where they're coming and going in and out. Where have you seen them moving? Where have you seen them running? You want to put a trap everywhere you've seen a mouse go or everywhere you suspect a mouse goes in or comes out. New stupid okay. question. Would you ever put one up high? Like, would you put it on a shelf or something if you saw a mouse on it? Mice and rats are exceptional climbers. Yes. So if you've got a normal house, let's just say your house is 1800 square feet and you've got a basement and you've got you know a, a story and a half 20 traps is not enough you could set 20 traps just in the basement alone and then around your food source you probably need another 10 traps and then up high because that's in the winter time the highest part of your house is typically the warmer part of your house everywhere there's an exit hole you need a trap so you could easily set 50 traps in a house with no problem and that's not out of the question if you've got a rat problem, if you've got a mouse problem, you need to get a hold of that. And so you need to spend the money on traps. Buy a bunch of traps. Buy the case. Can they get them on Wildlife Control Supply or no? Yes. Wildlife Control Supply. Just check the link down below for Wildlife Control Supply. They sell all different brands of traps. They sell a bunch of them. And they sell them in bulk. So go buy you a case of traps. One other note of clarity, when do you rebate them? Like when does your bait get old? If you use the baiting system that I just showed you, that bait's gonna last the life of that trap unless a mouse gets caught and a rat comes by and eats all the bait because the mouse got caught and now the trap doesn't work. You need to rebait. That peanut butter will stay viable for months. So you don't really need to rebait. You might need to reposition because if you've got a trap that's been sitting somewhere for a long time and it's got no activity, then put it somewhere else where there's more activity. Which one of these two traps do you think will last the longest? Like for your lifetime, when you consider your human lifetime, mm -hmm. this plastic trap is gonna last the longest. The other nice thing is when you catch a rat in it and another rat eats that rat and you get rat guts and blood all over this trap, you can put this in the dishwasher and wash it just nice and easy. This one, not so much. This one gets stained with rat blood and that blood is on there. And so even though some rats, it doesn't bother them, other rats will avoid it. There is so much to cover on these traps. I think we're gonna make another video. For instance, a lot of people might be asking, what about my pets? The next video, we're gonna talk about which of these is safe for your pets? Which ones are the safest? Which ones are not safe? We, we haven't even started talking about the differences of the traps even yet. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do another video. Let's do another video on exactly why are there so many different kinds of traps. They all do the same thing and they all pretty much work the same way. But some of them have some particular advantages that others don't. Anyway, if you're brand new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on that bell notification so every time we upload a new video, you are notified immediately. And then if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you hate this video, give me a thumbs up but be brave enough to put a comment with it. Why do you hate it? Be brave. Be brave. You know what's funny is I heard Jet's tail bell go off when you said the notification bell. Oh, really? <laughs> right now I need some notification and some rays. <laughs>